So this is, uh, as always, a little bit experimental. Um, so yeah, uh, apparently the phone doesn't, oh, now it has internet, okay. So you see, this is uh, the new interface of a pocket code and all the other uh, things that other flavors that we are developing in the Catavat project. But today I want to show you all the inspirations we got from Snap from the eCraft to Learn AI extension of Snap, of, of course, Turtle Stitch, and also of Akos and, uh, you know, his team's uh, net blocks. So a few things here. First of all, I uh, managed to, to bring uh, GPT-3 to run in pocket code, but I found that I'm not allowed to do live demos. So what I did is I recorded the voice and you have to trust me that it's really true. So I'll try to uh, show this now and then I will uh, go through it very quickly, how it works. I, I hope that it works. Let me see if you hear the voice. Uh, how should I do that? Yeah. I'm GPT-3. Ask me anything. What do you know about the programming language Smalltalk? So it takes some time. Smalltalk is powerful and was used in a variety of projects. For example, Smalltalk being used in the Xerox Star Office computer. Uh, wait a moment, I just have to, so this was still part of the recording, so I'm not sure, did you hear what uh, what uh, I just played as a sound, the reaction of GPT-3, was it audible for you? Yeah, yes, yeah, okay. a bit quiet, but it was audible. Okay, so I was asking about small talk and it gave a, a reasonable answer that was correct, more or less. So here's the program, yeah, so basically what it does is there's the eye, uh, which follows the face of the user that uh, is in front of it. So you see here, I'll just uh, make it run very quickly. So you see, as I move, uh, the eye also moves in the di different direction. So that's already one part of the AI that we have included, and then it blinks also. And here is the main part. And a few things that might be of interest for some of you is that we store the API key locally on the device. That's why we read it first. And that allows us to avoid the problem that users upload their API keys to our sharing site. And so if there is no API key yet, it will uh, just uh, ask the user and then write it to the local memory. And yeah, that's one of the security measures that we have in place. There are others as well, but let's say this here is the introduction sentence uh, where it introduces itself. And then there's this forever loop where it listens to the voice. And this one block here allows to, uh, yeah, it, it's voice recognition. You can also change the language and such things. And then there's this one block. This is not a block that we, provide, it's just a user contributed block that actually does something. And it says the answer and repeats. And here we have chosen the approach that we want to have a very general uh, interface to all uh, possible APIs, which of course, again, raises security uh, issues, uh, but basically it's a post request. And then we use something like regular expressions. I love regular expressions. Regular expressions are incredibly powerful and allow to extract, for instance, in a very easy way, some JSON parts, in this case, the text that is coming from GPT-3. So, uh, yeah, and sorry, there was also then the say and then the animation of the, of the mouse. So just to show you here in the settings, there's the list of the trusted domains. We have a long list, like 150 domains that are pre-listed. And then whenever there's a new domain coming up, the user is asked whether to allow it once or forever. 
and it can be added here as well. And we also have included one small thing that is useful is uh, that when the user uploads some program and there's an API key that can be detected in it, the user will be warned and uh, is given the opportunity to replace it by some dummy text because that's a typical mistake that users do and it can be expensive. I saw that I spent already a few, well, I have a limited budget for GPT-3, so I can't disclose my key here. And then here, what's new also is this um, AI extension because we found that it's better to group it together so that not everything is used, uh, visible for all the users. So we have uh, from the bottom text recognition, which is useful for robots and a few other things, uh, among them the speech recognition that I used here. And then there are lots of other uh, extensions like the embroidery extension. So I want to show that also very quickly because that relates to Andrea's uh, turtle stitch uh, project. So here, for instance, I have made a little bit larger project that allows me to, um, to read in any kind of picture. And then um, I can, okay, in this case, I have to, yeah, I can turn on certain things. Like for instance, I want to make the penguin a little bit more transparent and I want to make stitches at certain points. Yeah? And then I can pinch zoom that and finally I can generate it and, and uh, yeah, export it as, as an embroidery file in the same format as turtle stitch and stitch it on the machines. And for instance, I did that as a present to, as a Christmas present to my wife with 20,000 stitches yeah? so from some, some tribal art from India, which I copied. But of course, it's also possible to do all the things that can be done um, with uh, embroidery designer here from, um, yeah, with, with turtle stitch. So here for us, for, no. <laughs> someone is speaking. Hi. <laughs> Hear some voices. Okay. So here, for instance, this is uh, another example, but this is programmed in this case. In my case, it was more sampling with where I can draw something, but this is a, a full program and it takes advantage of these uh, bricks, which are a little bit similar, like the ones that you have in Turtle Stitch. We can also set the thread color and there's a tatami uh, stitch that is currently being implemented, which allows to cover larger, uh, larger places, which is also very nice. Um, yeah, so uh, this, this, and there's, uh, if you're interested in embroidery, there's also a lot of documentation online. And actually uh, we have one code.org course about embroidery and it's, it's really uh, well received and gets a lot of, um, I'm just looking, where is it here? Anyway, there's a very nice Instagram site where you can see many of the designs that were made with this embroidery designer. That's one of the things that we do is that we have special flavors for our extensions uh, as a marketing measure, but also to be be easier to discover because pocket code by itself already can do so many things so it's really difficult to know that it can you know you can program arduino and uh, embroidery machines and uh, lego milestones and whatnot so we make it's, it's like chocolate in the supermarket we have different flavors of our catbird software to make it easier to discover because there's only a limited place and yeah, so here you can see all kinds of designs. It can be also combined with uh, electronics. So where's that? Yeah, so these things here, I think are, yeah, with uh, LEDs. So you can actually uh, program 
you're closed to react to certain uh, situations. Yeah? So now uh, I also wanted to show a few things that uh, we were inspired, especially from Next blocks. And uh, here I made a simple uh, program that uh, retrieves a map. I hope it works. If the internet is there, let's see. Yeah. So here you see now in the center is where I am currently. <laughs> and uh, I hope that the weather retrieval works. It's overcast and 20 degrees. Well, I think, I'm not sure what, I think the weather is actually much worse than overcast, but that's of course what I get from the internet here. And what is nice here is that it's possible now to, you know, like move this around and also zoom, pinch zoom and such things. That's of course something that is very, oops, let me start that. Yeah, so it should work. Yeah. Let's zoom in. And then you can move forever in any direction because it simply uh, recreates tiles from, uh, from the other side. And this is all done through clones so that you never run out of tiles. And yeah, because then I think uh, more than 1 billion tiles depending on their resolution from this, uh, from this map service. So that's, that's one of the things and it works again with um, uh, it works with let me see where is it with a web API where we get here in this case the image simply is through a get uh, brick get request on the web which allows us to access it and so uh, it's a little bit general but there's one new thing that I really like. Uh, which is that I'm not sure if I can show it here, maybe in this one. Um, let me see. We just added it that we can now also, yeah, it's, it's inside here actually. Let me see. Yeah. So here, the newest thing is that we have, we can create new objects, not only by drawing them or taking them from our library. Uh, from our looks library, but we also have now a library of objects. It works. Yeah, it's, there's not much yet, much yet here, but these are objects that are predefined with scripts and so on. So this is quite useful, for instance, for the embroidery stuff, if we want to have complex objects that can, for instance, do things like write arbitrary text in a font, which is very complicated, but this allows us, this import of objects allows us to include um, uh, complex objects, which basically can be very easily created. We, we will open that also to our users so that they can create, uh, can, excuse me. Not sure, I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions, ask me anything, ask me anytime. But uh, this is really useful, not only for embroidery, but also if you have certain complex uh, features, like for instance, maps or this access to GPT-3 or so, because anyone can produce a kind of, it's not an extension, but it's a library for complex stuff that can be, uh, yeah. Um, proposed and then you can even place it visually. Yeah. And then it's included together with this and it already has uh, bricks. In this case, I will just um, delete it because I wanted to show you also the uh, market touch. And that's, I think, then the end. So this is a very nice program where you can have up up to 10 females actually. I'm not sure why it doesn't have 10 here, but it should work. Yeah. And it works more smoothly on my screen here than in the projection. This is very nice because it illustrates uh, the 10 finger system. For what do you need it? 
for instance, you can use it for a program like this puzzle, where you can place all the, uh, the puzzle elements uh, by moving them around with up to 10 fingers. Uh, but first they have to be a little bit bigger so that you can grab them. But once you have them here, you can all move them around and turn them and so on. Uh, so this is of course something, oops, I'm not sure where it should go. But anyway, yeah. So uh, what did I forget? I mean, we are learning a lot from Snap also. Uh, and Snap, in particular, one thing that I was shocked to hear yesterday is that Snap doesn't want to uh, support the generalized uh, uh, JavaScript block anymore <laughs> because we are <laughs> just starting to implement it. But I understand the, the problems, yeah, the security issues. And that's always something that we worry about uh, because we had already many problems with users trying to grab uh, passwords and accounts and so on from, from other users. And for instance, uh, with, the, with the web access in combination with voice recognition, this is a huge kind of worms, of course. And what we do is if users download such programs, the first thing is that they get a warning. Be careful, this program listens to your voice without maybe you knowing and also communicates with the internet and that can be dangerous. Yeah? So I tried to give you a few uh, new, yeah, new features of pocket code and Catrobrat and let me know if you, want to, to know more about anything or if you have any questions or suggestions. Thank you very much.